What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to not the Nights of Horror or Eddie Tainment. Welcome back to a Booze Bros video. If you guys are not aware, uh, our good buddy Adrian from Lost TV launched the official Booze Bros channel, a channel where we can all collab and come together like the Booze Bros we are and put up videos for you guys on this channel. And Eddie and I thought it'd be an amazing idea to bring over East versus West to make it an exclusive show for this channel. Uh, I don't know how consistently we'll be up uh, uploading for East versus West, but you can promise a lot of episodes will be coming on here into the future, and this is the debut episode of that. If you guys have been following myself and Eddie for some time, we've been doing East versus West now for about two years, uh, like 30-plus episodes. And it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's so now we're <laughs> officially making the transition to the Booze Bros, and I'm very stoked for this because I know this is something me and Eddie have been talking about for some time since the channel launched and this is the first official episode so and, and, and welcome to the for most of you it's going to be your first time to the booze bros we'll go deeper into detail of what the brew, booze bros are if you haven't watched the trailer make sure to watch the trailer too that was a really good trailer by zombie chris zombie chris man put out the trailer and it, it was good um but basically the booze bros it's a collection of of myself eddie uh zombie chris connor florida uh lost tv uh haunted or uh oh. hollow thrills hollow thrills yeah why did i say haunted <laughs> i don't know i have something with the h i knew that hollow thrills michael <laughs> and of course uh socal exploring and the hotline so yeah, can't, can't forget about the hotline can't man. Forget about the hotline that guy's growing rapidly you got to change his name to the hotline bro the hotline, he's, right? he's on, on fire on fire <laughs> but it, it, it's going to be a fun time. I'm I'm glad that we're doing East versus West now on uh, the Booze Bros. Um, because uh, for me, I, and I don't know about you, Eddie, but for me, this made more sense. I mean, me and you are two of the Booze Bros, and I figured, well, what can we do to do our part on this channel? And this was it, <laughs> East versus West. So yeah. uh, it, it's a big step for us. Um, and we're excited to be putting this out on the Booze Bros channel, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And we have a lot to talk about because, you know, the last time uh, Eddie and I were together was, I think, Oof. like July, maybe. Was it really that long ago? I feel time, like it hasn't been that long. It's been some time. Because it's been some time for sure. We were doing but, um, close comparisons, patiently waiting for Haunt Season to be announced and then and then they hit us with the announcement. I think that's what what broke our our groove because we were we were uploading pretty consistently up till it was announced that Halloween Horror Nights was officially canceled. Yeah, it it really was. We were doing coast comparisons, <laughs> trying to keep all hope together, and I think we all just at least for my side, my point of view, and things. We I started getting really busy uh, with with other projects and and getting ready for a an interesting new 2020 haunt season this year. Let's, let's just say the truth. We've been crying for two months and we just stopped. So yeah, we just had our back. <laughs> we just stopped. No, but there's a lot to talk about. Obviously, uh, HHN light is one of them. Of course, uh, in Orlando there, they opened the two mazes, the tooth fairy. And of course the, the bride of Frankenstein, uh, was huge news when that dropped. So we're going to be covering that. And then uh, on my end of things, at least, uh, we're going to be covering a lot of the SoCal haunts I've already hit and that are coming up uh, in the future. So this is a pretty good uh, transition to the Booze Bros, especially for all of our uh, East Coast and West Coast viewers. Uh, you get the opportunity to get a both uh, a, your dose of both coasts. So Yeah. And I think also, uh, more importantly, when it comes down to like the Booze Bros and Anthony and I doing things like this, um, this gives everybody a platform because the majority of the our audience, we have a lot of audience that is cross audience. So it's undeniable that some of the people that watch you watch me, we've done a lot of things together. Some of the people that watch Scott watch you, you know, that type of thing. Um, but there's a large majority or a large portion of those people that may only watch one of us singularly this gives a platform where people could see other creators that do similar things because a lot of times when i'm on youtube i'm looking for creators with similar um content and it's it's hard to find them you gotta sometimes you gotta dig a little bit deep here you'll be able to to come into one channel and find i don't know how many that is like five six seven seven different channels 
Uh, don't quote me on that number, but Anthony already named everybody. He missed two, but he named everybody. No, I'm kidding. He didn't miss anybody. <laughs> but, say, miss? But, <laughs> but all those channels all accumulated in one location where you could find us all. And then from there, you could branch out and say, okay, I want to watch a little bit more Anthony. I want to watch a little bit more Eddie. I want to watch some zombie Chris because his lighting is so nice. I want to watch uh you know the hotline because his hair is ridiculous you know ridiculous his quality is amazing and his editing (laughs) is out of his world yeah but but yeah let's get into today's content today's content man so let's talk a little bit about what's going on on the east coast because i know there's not much going on there but the stuff that is going on is kind of big news for at least halloween horror nights fans uh obviously uh eddie living out more kind of like the upper east coast by the dc area not much yeah. for him to do, um, but he, of course, goes down uh, south to, of course, uh, Florida a lot to check out what they have. The biggest one that's going on in the East Coast, obviously, is uh, the two mazes that they're doing at Universal Studios full-time walkthrough throughout the day. And, of course, if anyone else wants to get a further fix, you can go through the uh, the tribute store as well. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, what that's what that's like. And I, and I know that, I, from my understanding, as of this recording, you actually are planning a trip to go out there again to, to experience those, right? Correct. Yeah. So, and hopefully that trip is very soon. So uh, I was unlucky enough that I didn't cancel my, my original like opening weekend trip to Halloween Horror Nights. I was like, well, Halloween Horror Nights is canceled. Universal Studios is open. So I might as well just go. And they, I was there and they literally announced the day after I left that the following weekend, these two houses would be opening up. And I was like, gosh, darn it. What the heck? my freaking luck so the weekend after i came back they opened up these two houses which is the bride of frankenstein lives and um the two fairy they've both gotten i mean they've gotten great reviews but a little bit of mixed reviews as well not everybody has been 100 percent about it but i i can't see how it's going to be too bad i mean most people have been saying that the plexiglass scares are not that big of an issue the only thing that they notice is occasionally they're able to see a scare coming in advance because the plexiglass is there um, and that's understandable. I, I think for what it is, um, Halloween Horror Nights 29.5, Halloween Horror Nights Light, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I think for what it is, they, they've done a great job. I, I'm looking forward to experiencing it myself. And now that they've gotten past that opening weekend, the the crowds seem to be much more manageable. Um, you're able to actually like walk on and experience the house more than once. I've seen a lot of videos with people, uh, maybe not on a weekend, but throughout the day or throughout the weekdays, being able to go to Universal Studios and do the houses multiple times. So I think the crowds have become very manageable. Um, the The event itself is minimized because of the pandemic, but you got a lot of things that you can do at Universal Studios. You got those two houses, you got the the scare zones, and then you also have the, I forget what that bar was ca- called, but there is a bar that they put in place that's kind of like a, a mini walkthrough as well. Um, you could get some some drinks that are themed to Halloween Horror Nights and the fall event. Um, and it, they have like a bunch of like props set up. So that's kind of universal um, and what they're doing. But we also have other events. I mean, not as many as as the the West Coast. The West Coast definitely seems like they have a lot of events out there. Anthony has put a couple of them up already. Um, but we do have some drive through haunts, uh, scream, scream and scream. Um, all of o- almost all of the the guys in the booze bros went to scream and stream. Um, you know, I, I I'm not one to criticize it too much. I think for what it was and from what I've seen in the in the videos, it it did well with what it had and it's it's a new style of experience so uh to to judge it too quickly and and be too harsh i think is unfair um that's pretty cool and then um down in florida you also got uh howl scream which howl scream i've seen some videos have you seen some videos anthony i have not I, from what i've heard though it's just uh you know they opened it up scare zones i think much much like how your bush gardens is doing right yeah, but i think they do it they're a little bit more scare actor yeah friendly it, it's it's a little bit more intense and the videos that i've seen it's it's basically like an outdoor haunted house um not so much a scare zone because um i, I watched it on the i think it was tim tracker that i watched 
they actually had like it's like a kind of like a maze hallway through some of these scare zones very wide but they put up walls and facades that you actually walk through it's not like your typical scare zone i mean maybe an elaborate scare zone like a like a rob zombie scare zone is something that you could compare it to but it's it's like a haunted house like uh event um and i think they got they have like um I think it was six scare zones, but two or three of those scare zones are one way. So it's very much like a haunted house. You could only go one direction through it and there's going to be scares that come out at you. So uh, I think what they're doing at their event is pretty interesting. Um, Down or up my way, there's several events that are happening, not as large as over on the West Coast or down South in Florida. Um, There's Bennett's Curse, which is a actual haunted house that you get to walk through. There's Markoff's, which is a haunted forest that you'll get to walk to, uh, walk through. These are two things that I'm looking at doing. Both of them are in Maryland, um, just outside of DC. That's the good thing about DC is like, you could go to North Carolina, Virginia, DC, and Maryland, all within like a, a five hours time. And in most cases within like a two hours time for most of those locations. Um, and uh, one thing that I've already done is uh, Hallow, well, not Hallow Scream. It's called Halloween Harvest at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. So the sister um, event for the Tampa location is here in Williamsburg, Virginia. And we went, we got, we were lucky enough to get uh, media passes for it and got to experience the media event, which was really cool. They treated us really well. It was a good time out there. It definitely is different. It's not like your typical Halloween event. Um, you can't go in there, it, you know, comparing it to what was there before being like, oh, this isn't Howl's Scream because it, it's not. And that's not what they're acting like it is. Um, it's a limited capacity event. You need reservations. You go. There's no there's no actual like scare actors roaming everywhere. They're just in very precise uh, areas. Um, there's only one scare zone really at the whole event with a couple of people that that will roam. Um, but for the most part, the event is much more limited than it would typically be but still a very enjoyable event and you get the the opportunity to ride all the roller coasters at night at least the ones that are open um some of the really good ones too um what else is going on uh there's another uh there's a lot of around here a lot of uh, uh pumpkin patches which i think is popular everywhere and some of the pumpkin patches in this area are going to have like uh haunted mazes which are still um something to feed your your haunt need or your haunt appetite in the in the meantime up till we wait till 2021 but for the most part on the east coast that's what's going on at least from here i know like up in pennsylvania and things like that there's a couple other events that are pretty decent um but i don't typically go up that way i'm from dc down to to florida yeah. oh hella blurry all of a sudden there we go there you it go. lost me um <laughs> yeah uh I know there's not much out there. I've been hearing that a lot from not only the bros, but um, just fans who are in that area of just Florida. You know, like the the Universal Studios stuff is the closest they have to a haunt season this year. So uh, they're, they're really a lot of people are really taking advantage of that. Um, down here on the on the on the West Coast, though, there there's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities now with the West Coast, especially in Southern California. Uh, is known for a lot, and this is even during if there was a regular haunt season, is home haunts. There's a lot of people out here that love decorating their house, whether it be via yard display or actually building an entire maze in their backyard or something. It's a really big trend out here in the Southern California area. Uh, If you go to conventions like Midsummer Scream, they really highly advertise that in their Hall of Shadows, where they uh, invite a bunch of um, home haunters out. They build a a part of their maze to give you a preview of what they we can to give you a preview of what they that you can expect this season from them, and then from there you just venture off to see if you want to go see them or not, which is a really cool thing. Uh, This year to make do with you know no haunt season and for me to get somewhat of a haunt fix still um i really am excited to be visiting a lot of the home haunts now a lot of them are not happening till starting next week and and when the week's coming a lot of them are waiting until like the last final weeks of of october um but i've already hit a couple of um halloween events if you will and the reason why i haven't said they're all haunts because only only you know there's one of them that was like a whole family friendly event um 
But I, I believe that, you know, the drive through experience this year is a huge one. This is something that's yeah. new for everyone because they really want to give you that that sense of getting scared but feeling safe while doing it in a, in a you know, in a pandemic world. Um, obviously it's, it's a new thing, so not everyone's going to like it. And I keep telling people this, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of them are not going to probably be the best, but you got to remember, this is better than nothing. You know, you're getting something over nothing, you know I mean? And, and this is the first for a lot of people who are doing this drive through type of experience. So there's obviously kinks to work out if they want to continue to do something like this next season, but I have had no complaints from my end, at least from nothing. So let, let's break down what I've done thus far. Um, I've done the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride. That was fun. Uh, so basically the Hayride out here, they usually set up an entire event with like last year was um, three three mazes. and No, yeah, three mazes and the Hayride itself. So it was a whole like it you know it's a whole event that they set up in the park of uh, Griffith Park in Los Angeles. Uh, this year, uh, because of COVID, they did have a plan of to do a full on event. However, uh, when Los Angeles pretty much told them they can't do something, they had to think of something within a few weeks before you know their opening date. So they they came up with the Los Angeles Hana Hayride Drive Up Experience, which is basically a drive in kind of haunt where you park your car, you watch a film for about 30 minutes, but in between that film, you have actors roaming around. Uh, that was a fun time. I really enjoyed going through that and, and checking that out, especially because I knew two people who worked there. So I got to experience both the VIP portion of it, which I went opening night, which is really cool. If you get eight people and you guys split it down the middle uh, cost-wise, you get your own trailer. Uh, you actually get to go outside of your car and sit in that trailer. There's seats to sit on. Uh, and it's all outdoors, so it's a fun experience, a fun time. Um, everybody got a trailer? No, just the VIP. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you, you went with TLEV, right? Went with TLEV, that scumbag um, Mr. E, uh, and um, Josue. Josue is not a scumbag. He's a nice guy. Um, but <laughs> just Mr. E. Just Mr. E. Um, but no, I went with them and a couple other friends and we all pitched in and got this and it was a fun, fun experience. Uh, it was really cool. They, they play some Crypt TV, uh, shorts and in between they have the host Monty Revolta, who is fucking hilarious. Um, I love listening to that guy sing and, and just be funny. It, it's, it's a fun experience. I, I did both the very front and the very back. So I think for me, the very That's back. That's what she said. Oh yeah. Okay. We're going there now, huh? <laughs> Um, in in the very back row, I think it was better for me because uh, I, I had a lot more interactions. Uh, they had worked out kinks that opening weekend, and there was a lot more uh, interactiveness uh, that that um, that last time I went. So I had a, I had a fun time both times I went, and it was just it was cool to see all like as you're driving in, they have all the iconic set pieces that they used last season. Uh, set up on display as you're driving up to the theater, which is cool. And, um, yeah, I mean, they still continue that story. It's just another portion of Midnight Falls that you may never get to see again ever. This might be a one-time deal. So it, it was cool to experience that. That's how I've been thinking about it. Like, this might be the only time we ever get to see Midnight Falls drive-in. So this is a part of the story that if you didn't get to experience it, uh, you're kind of going to miss out on that. So that was cool. And then I've done... Uh, the taste of Halloween um, at Knott's uh, Berry Farm out here. Uh, basically, Knott's Scary Farm, obviously famous for their event every season in the Halloween time, and they did not do it this year. But they w wanted to give fans uh, uh, still that, that feel of, of a haunt season, which is really cool. I just thought of something. What? Did we mention Rob in the Booze Bros? Well, he's part of Knights of Horror, so... Oh, okay. All right. So we're consolidating. My whole team, score. who's ever on my just team is sure. automatically a booze bro. Okay. Just making sure I didn't want to yeah. leave anybody out. Rob, Rob is, <laughs> we'll talk about Rob too. Cause Rob's been a big help this season thus far, but and he, uh, he went with you to, to this event, right? He went with me to taste the following. He went with me to urban legends, um, for the second time. So he's been a really big help this season, but, um, yeah, so we went to taste the following and it was a really cool experience. Uh, much like taste of knots. Um, 
it, it's fun because you know you have this tasting event which I, I went to taste the knots and it was awesome then taste of Halloween it, it's another tasting event but this time around they have the park decked out in Halloween uh, they have actual actors that are on like the the balconies and stuff of ghost town and in and, and, uh, Fiesta Village and the boardwalk just kind of uh, doing shows or just you know talking with guests which was a really cool uh, feature to add on to give it that haunt vibe to it and uh, at the at when it came nightfall it, it was cool because if you guys know anything about ghost town uh, the the main kind of area for Knott's Berry Farm like one of the main sections you walk through uh, the main street of ghost town is known for fog alley so they they fill it up with fog during haunt season it's like really impossible to walk through there you can barely see anything um, and they kind of did tribute to that uh, with doing fog and, and having the lights which was really cool and not to mention in the the camp snoopy area they had a lot of um, haunt uh, props that they've used in the past in mazes that were cool to see and and all that but all in all i've done taste of knots now or following um twice and i've had a, a blast doing it the food was good um and just being in that atmosphere at knott's berry farm was was really cool uh i did urban legends urban legends was uh urban legends has been getting a lot of hate um, mainly because a lot of people's big deal is if they buy the VIP, they're paying all this money and they only get a photo op and a glow stick and you get to be in the center of the show. Um, is this another drive through? This is another, or this is the OC drive through one. So this was a big <clears throat> one. This was like actually the first official drive through I experienced. Um, I will say this the first time I went, I mean, I had a blast both times I went, I can't deny that at all. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, I want them to think that, hey, you know, I'm just saying this to help them. No, I'm not. Like, I legit had a, a good time both times I went. Uh, I went with TLEV again. Uh, I invited them out. We went opening night, and we, we went through it. Uh, there was a lot of kinks that needed to be worked out, but when we went the second time around with Robin and his, uh, his wife, Robin, it was such a fun time, uh, and they worked out so much b between uh, traffic control and how fast you got in and out of the, the experience, and what now? Is that the one video when Rob was like, oh, yeah, I'm here with my my, my wife, Anthony. Yeah, my <laughs> wife and Anthony. Not my, not my wife, Anthony, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, oh, shoot. Yeah, that, that, yeah he, he's a jokester, man. I love Rob. <laughs> But um, no, so it, it was cool to, to go through that the second time. They're, they're, like I said, a lot worked out. Scaractors felt more energetic the second time around. Not saying they weren't energetic the first time around, but there was a little bit more energy, I think, as the season progressed that they, they finally found their groove and they knew what worked and what didn't. So they really did that. They fixed a lot of stuff and they added some stuff, which was really cool. Um, and Urban Legends has been selling out like crazy, so that's that's really good to hear. Um I done one yard display by the Bloodshed Brothers, and that was really good. Uh, if you guys are into like that '50s style vintage Halloween, that is the 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 yard display to go see. It, it it was a bit of a drive. It was out kind of like it was in the Marietta Marietta. I forget how to say that place, but it's in that kind of area. So it was a bit of a drive, but I didn't just go to drive out there, see it, film it, and leave. I went out there to like drive out there, see it, film it, and hang out with them, which was really cool. Uh, Bloodshed nice. Brothers always put on good stuff. Uh, usually they put on haunts, but this year they couldn't get the uh, the space they usually have, so they they had to uh, do a yard. Uh, they they did a they didn't have to. They actually wanted to do a yard display, which I thought was awesome, keeping that Halloween spirit alive. Um, but yeah, that's that's just the stuff that I've done thus far. And of course, you know, a lot of and I've been introducing a lot of the guys to this too. Uh, Roblox, obviously known for having their Halloween Horror Nights event. Um, virtually for anyone who can't, you know, Dude. anyone who can't make it out to a haunt physically Roblox, I found so many different haunts to go through that. This is the way you can get your fix this season. If you want to just do that. I mean, I, I'll be honest. Like I always used to talk shit about Roblox, but they get creative in that <laughs> game, especially these haunts. Dude, it's crazy. Like, um, I haven't seen the the haunts that you've been posting personally. Like I haven't walked through them um, on my my account. But um, dude, just doing Halloween Horror Nights was impressive. Going through Universal Studios was impressive. Like if you're not able to travel because you're not not too comfortable yet, it, this is a great opportunity. Like I mean, the Incredible Hulk coaster is pretty spot on. Um, there's the mummy coaster, pretty spot on as well. Um, 
the Hogwarts area, all, all the park is pretty damn spot on. I mean, there's differences for sure, but you could experience Halloween Horror, Horror Nights in a whole different fashion. Walk through some of the houses, and I'm not going to lie, some of them do make me jump. <laughs> they you know, catch they, me. And that was the thing that got me was, like, a lot of these houses, you know, it's a game. It's virtual. And, you know, the, the fact that you go into that first-person experience – really puts you into that environment. I mean, and they did yeah. a, they do a great job. I think what they do is they wait till a season ends at Horror Nights and they will use those mazes that they did. So they have time to study them. They have time to build them to scale. And they do a phenomenal job. Like, I, yeah. I don't think I was disappointed with one maze at nope. the event. I mean, I can rank them how I want to, but no disappointment for me at all. No. Um, and it's it's really cheap too. I think the the most expensive ticket is like five dollars, and that's yeah. just for the entire season. You get um, frequent fear uh, express. So yeah. I think that's the way to go. I've been telling people that was the way to go, um, especially if you see some of those lines. And also a, a cool treat that they've been doing. They started last weekend as they would bring in um, houses. Uh, last weekend was an original kind of concept where it was a jack house. And he was like the host of the house, but they threw a lot of throwbacks to um, past houses. So they had a Halloween ver uh, part in there. They had an Exorcist part, a Shining part. Um, Dude, I was wondering where the hell you got that. I went on and started looking for it and couldn't find it. That was at the Halloween Hornets Roblox? Yeah, that was only for one weekend, though, <clears throat> just last weekend. So this weekend, uh... if you want to experience another exclusive for just this weekend only, they're going to do a La Llorona maze. Um, oh, that's and... dope. I don't know where they're going to put this one, but the entrance for the Jack one was at the entrance of where you go into Hogwarts. Um, okay. So that's where they put it. But I don't know where I, I would assume they're going to put it in the same place, but I don't know yet. Um, and that starts as of this recording on Friday. But if you guys are watching this on Friday, it just started today. So go check that out this weekend only. And if you guys do miss it, I uh, on my channel, I've been putting up the walkthroughs and stuff so you guys can check a look at it. But. No, these these Roblox haunts are really cool. I found through that I found uh, Hollywood Scream Fest, which was basically all the best um, theme parks in in Southern California. Like they have the the entrance for California Adventure. I think the overall uh, layout of the 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 park is supposed to be based around Universal Studios, and uh, they have a little bit of knots in there as well. So it's it's a really fun time, and they have a lot of exclusive. Uh, um, IP scare zones and one I think they have one IP maze and the rest of them are like originals but based off other haunts and stuff which I thought was really cool so that's a free one you can go check out um, Monster Mash this was one that I found on Twitter I, you know after going through the HHN I was like there's got to be more haunts people do on this Roblox so I, I went on Twitter and started finding a bunch Monster Mash was another one uh, that one is cool they just launched actually uh, this is really cool and I'm going to post this video this video is already on my channel but as of this recording, uh, it's not yet, but they did a scale, like, literally sh room for room remake uh, built a uh, tooth fairy maze that they're doing right now in Orlando. So if you're not able to go out to Orlando and you've only seen the POV walkthrough and you kind of want to get somewhat of a walkthrough through it, uh, Monster Mash has the maze uh, tooth fairy which was literally almost room for room, and it was really cool. Uh, they're also doing a Halloween 1978 uh, original Halloween maze, which is really cool, uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and Trick or Treat. Um, so this was a really cool one, and they built like a little mini uh, tribute store, like how they have it uh, Orlando, because in, in the middle of it, it's Frankenstein's monster laying on the bed, which I thought was really cool. Um, and Roblox has it too, the yeah. tribute store. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it was really cool to see a lot of these... Um, these haunts, man. I mean, I, I think there's another one that I went through and I, and I posted up, but uh, there's a lot to look forward to and a lot to do that. So that's your virtual. If you if you can't get anywhere physical or you don't want to leave your house because it's completely understandable, uh, Roblox really is the way to go uh, if you want to get someone of a haunt fix this year. Um, not a sponsored plug. Not a sponsored plug. I just I genuinely <laughs> just have a fun time playing with the fans and, and having a, a good time at these yeah. events with them. It's fun. Dude, so... In all honesty, when you told me about it, I was kind of second guessing it because it seemed like um, what's that other very like a uh, blocky game that kids play Mine that I Minecraft. can't understand? Minecraft. It seemed like Minecraft, and I was just like, I don't know now if this is for me. And then I I hopped on one day. I was just trying it out out for free, and we walked through The Walking Dead, and I was like, Holy shoot! This Halloween Horror Nights event on here might actually be awesome. And no, was. that was that was kind of like the preview. I was like, okay, let's walk through. They have a they built a Walking Dead attraction now. I know in Florida they don't have that. They don't have that, but 
over here in Hollywood they did. So they actually built that into the park. So I was like, let's walk through this. Maybe we'll get an idea of what this event will look like. And that was actually a very spot on walkthrough of that attraction. Like it almost, they pretty much got everything right. Um, and they, uh, whoever builds these, like they really take their time and they really put a lot of detail into it. I know they're currently, uh, as of right now, they're doing their, their Horror Nights, but I think after that they're going to be launching the uh, Men in Black ride pretty soon. Um, so I'm excited to see what that looks like. I mean, I, I've seen walkthroughs or ride-throughs on that on YouTube, so I'm excited to see what it's going to look like in Roblox. Um, but that's your Roblox Virtual Kick. If you guys want to go check any of those out, we highly suggest it. Uh, again, no sponsors, no plugs or anything. It's just me being fans of these events and trying to find every way for everyone to enjoy a haunt season of some sort. Literally um, your safest way to enjoy the haunt season this year. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. From your, from the comfort of your own house too. Just, you know, uh, if I were you wait till night, tr shut off all the lights, do the horror nights, uh, do all these other Roblox and I guarantee you'll have a good time. But over here on the, on the, on the West coast, going back to this, um, we have a lot of home haunts coming up that I'm going to be attending and a, a kind of a major haunt that's going to be, it's a new up and coming one that I'm excited to check out too. And that's next week. Uh, we're going to be heading down to those both. Um, Welcome to Hellfest is a new uh, kind of haunt that's coming. It's a brand new, uh, a brand new event, a, a, a full on that's going to have two mazes. It's going to have a haunted trail. It's going to have uh, caterers, uh, people selling stuff. It's going to be a fun time. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, and I can't wait to experience that. Um, is this uh, when the infamous Try Not to Get Scared challenge is happening? It is. And uh, I keep oh. saying this, and uh, I'm standing by it. I'm walking into hell with my cha my championship, and I'm walking out of hell with my championship. Yep. The only difference is I'm leaving Tim in hell so he can suffer another <laughs> year. Burn. But, um, <laughs> no, it's going to be a fun time. Uh, I think uh, we had those guys on our podcast on, on my channel a few weeks back, and they were so cool. They are so stoked for this, for everyone to see it. Um, and I'm stoked to see it. Uh, they have their, obviously the biggest thing for any of these haunts every uh, this year is the COVID guidelines and they have guidelines set in place for people to have a safe and fun experience, which I'm, that's always just nice to hear and, you know, makes you feel safe in the end. Um, Corona haunt is a home haunt. They're doing a, um, a, a I think it's called shadow mountain. Uh, I may be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. But it's supposed to be a, a original maze that they designed based around, I think, um, maybe like a Yeti character. So I'm, I'm super stoked to see that home haunt. They've been doing home haunts for some time now. And um, from what I've heard, they do really good work. We've had them on the show, too. And we've talked with them and very nice people. So I can't wait to go see them. And then, of course, we have a, a stack season. I got to pull up my, my schedule to see what else I'm doing this this, this guy's got a schedule. I have people. to, man. I have to. I All have right. To be a little I, I had to be penciled in. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I told him, I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working days right now, so let's do it. We have a freaking opportunity to do this. Let's do this. Um, so, uh, Pirate's Cave, obviously, we, we hit that up last year. Uh, they're not doing a walkthrough haunt this year, but they are doing a really cool. Um, show a uh, yard display and a projection show with lights sound all that fun stuff and they're going to have actual actors with the show which is going to be really cool uh we, we got to talk with them we got a little exclusive sneak peek with them and i cannot wait to go see this um i'm super stoked for this i'm gonna have to go out they've invited me out a couple of times to actually get a behind the scenes look of what they're working on so i'm gonna have to take them up on their offer pretty pretty soon maybe coming come time this weekend or next weekend uh, I definitely want to go check out, see what they're working on before they uh, open up. Um, October 28th, I'm going to be hitting the, this is a, this is one I'm really looking forward to. And this is, I think, one that has really shattered ticket sale records uh, before they even went on sale, even with the pre-sale, was the uh, Stranger Things drive through experience. Now, Stranger Things obviously yeah. is a very popular show on Netflix. It's a very popular show in the haunt community and the horror community. And, uh... All I'm saying is anything can be better than 2019 Stranger Things at Horror Nights in Hollywood. <laughs> Wait, so we've been talking about this in the group chat with the rest of the booze, boo, uh, booze bros. Boo bros. I always mess that up. But um, I even messed it up in my video. I, I saw the, the booze bros and I called them the boo bros. But yeah. whatever. I digress. Um, 
is it gonna have like actual driving through or is it just a stop and sit so, that was a confusion in the group chat that i, I didn't got a, i got a media release which i'll be sharing this is actually a perfect time to be sharing that uh with the uh, community and i'll put what the exact release says on the screen but basically uh you're gonna go scene to scene and it's gonna be a uh, i think a, a one hour experience um and it's gonna be theatrical but it's also gonna have some scares into it so you're gonna go to like i think four different scenes so you're gonna actually be moving your car and going to different scenes i don't know how they have it set up i don't i don't know where the location's at um, but you're basically gonna be going to different scenes and they're gonna be playing out i think a lot of the scenes from season three so you're gonna see from what it says the opening thing that when you first drive in is you're gonna go through starcourt mall's facade and nice. that is where you can pick up like exclusive <laughs> like uh, some snacks some food so there's going to be like a whole like food court set up i'm assuming and this would be a missed opportunity if they did it but they're probably i'm almost 90 percent they'll they'll include this scoops ahoy will probably be there and be selling oh ice come cream. on you, you come on man they you, got to you can't do season three without scoops ahoy like come on that's like a, a staple for that season um yeah so i i thought that was cool just hearing that you're going to be think able they'll to have steve cream I don't know, man. We'll see. I'll find out. Um, but you, you would. Oh God. <laughs> you uh, you can't. Uh, I, I I thought it was a cool idea just to go through the Star Court Mall, and then you're gonna be ending up in the food court as your first kind of stop. So not that's how. I mean, the experience hasn't even really started yet, and you're getting yeah. the the uh, pre experience before the actual experience, which is really cool. Um, I have no idea what they're gonna do. I'm gonna try to do my best to. Uh, I know they're going to have a strict filming policy, so I, I will respect that. But uh, I, I will go into as detail as possible. Maybe if I can take a couple pictures or film a, a little bits and snips from my phone, I will do so so everybody can get an idea of what this was like. But um, from what John was saying in Hotline, uh, that this company does not tend to fail with giving out uh, experiences like this. So I'm very stoked. Um, you're a drive through haunt. I really feel like you can't be that strict on filming. It's just unfair. I'm sitting in my own property having to drive through your event right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, October 30th, I'm hitting the Drex Society. They, We just had them on the show. Uh, well, we filmed a podcast with them, which will actually be out next week on the channel. Um, they are doing a 1940s. So last year they were famous for doing at Midsummer Screen. They had this big movie theater facade, which looked amazing. And they did a bunch of famous horror movies. I think there was all 80s stuff. So they did like The Shining, Aliens, um, Friday the 13th Part 2. You know, they had a couple of these iconic horror films and it was a huge success. So this year they're taking the same facade, putting a couple bullet holes in it, putting a couple of World War II propaganda posters all over it. You're supposed to be in London of the 1940s. This movie theater is going to be screening some universal classic monsters. So I get my classic monsters fix nice. this year, which I'm very stoked for. Uh, from what <laughs> we talked about, it's going to include uh, Frankenstein's monster, Dracula, the Phantom of the Opera, and I think the Mummy. Yeah, I think those are the four that are going to be included into this. So I'm super stoked. Um, they honestly sound like they do like HHN quality properties and mazes so i'm i am super stoked to see what they have to bring in store plus on top of that uh we've already talked with them i'm gonna help them do a couple of other videos like uh maybe edit together a reaction walkthrough you know how you see like at horror nights they have those reaction videos of the people screaming so i'm gonna try to do something like that for them for maybe nice. a recap or something so they are really uh working with us and i'm super excited and then on october 31st halloween day uh, in Whittier, there's going to be a haunt called the Haunted Rose. I'm not sure if it's a haunt or yard display. I gotta look into it more, but we're gonna be checking that out as well. Uh, such, there's a lot of a lot of uh, stuff that we looked up and um, pretty much giving me a somewhat of a haunt season. But we're gonna check that out. Um, that's how I'll spend maybe the beginning of my Halloween night. But the rest of the Halloween night, I'm just gonna probably watch horror movies or maybe do a live stream. Who knows? Um, and then. My haunt season doesn't end on the 31st. My haunt season ends on November f November 7th <laughs> because I will be traveling out to Arizona. Uh, first time Knights of Horror has ever traveled anywhere to go to a haunt. As you guys all know, Sammy lives out in Arizona now. So I will be traveling out to Arizona, and we're going to be hitting up Fear Farm, which is put on by the same company who uh, runs Los Angeles Haunted Hay Ride 13th Floor Productions. Uh, and they put on, uh, from Sammy already went to it, I think he said there was four mazes and a corn um, cornfield maze, which I'm really looking forward to doing. 
Uh, and we're going to go hit that up and do some coverage. So we're going to have, we have a pretty busy couple of weeks coming up ahead of us. And that's just, Sounds like it. that's just some of the things that we, uh, that we are doing this season. I mean, obviously there were so many home haunts out there, so many yard displays. I actually just found out there's a yard display about, uh, in my, in my city, which I'm going to be going to check out pretty soon. And it's got like this big boat facade and everything. And it, it's really, it looks really cool. And when I found out it was in Norwalk, I was like, that's in my hood, man. That's like freaking five minutes away from me. I'm going to go check that out one of these nights. And you know what's the nicest thing to see? What? Sammy growing up be- before our eyes, man. He didn't like getting scared mm-hmm. before. And look at him going to haunts without you now. I know, right? Jeez. Made, it made me a proud Knights of Horror father. I know. Seriously. And that was, Way uh, to go, he, Sammy. He got somewhat of a haunt. He wanted to get a haunt fix this year, too. Look uh, at him go. Yep. <laughs> but that is basically what we're doing this uh, over here on the West Coast, man. There's, Like I said, there was plenty more to do, and there's plenty more out there. If you guys know anything about the uh, SoCal Haunt List, you can go on their website. There's a, a plethora of yard displays and, and home haunts and other things uh, that are happening that they list in the SoCal area that you can go check out. If there was something I didn't list that you wanted to go see, obviously go check it out. Um, I highly uh, suggest you support all these home haunts as they're doing their best to, to save Halloween and do all this. But yeah, I mean, West Coast is pretty stacked. Even though we don't have events, we are stacked with home haunts and other events that are coming up and just happy to have my fix somehow. And one of the things we have to say um, here, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, is first and foremost, creativity is at its best right now. Um, that goes for everybody doing the haunts and everybody doing haunt content as well, because we're having to scramble and make do with what we got. So we're trying to be as creative as possible. Uh, but these people putting the haunts, haunts on, uh, haunts, can't spoke, the haunts on for us also are being extremely creative. I mean, the fact that this year we had those drive through haunts, regardless of how well they were received by some people, I think is still an impressive feat. And somebody had to think out of the box to say, hey, we could keep people safe by keeping them in their car and they could still get that kind of semi walkthrough experience. It'll be a drive through experience, obviously. So mm-hmm. I think there's something to be said about the creativity that this has sparked, um, as well as, um, you know, now we have a greater appreciation, you know, so sometimes you don't appreciate things until it's taken away from you. And we kind of had our haunt season taken away from us. Uh, I got to say, I, I appreciate Halloween Horror Nights a lot more than I already did. And I think I had a pretty fond appreciation for it to begin with. Um, but now I think next year when it comes back around, uh, there's no way I'm going to miss it. And I'm going to make the most of that trip too. Definitely. No, I agree. I mean, that goes for all the SoCal haunts out here, but I'm just happy to see that this is going to be, at least in, in, in SoCal, this is going to be the year of the home haunts. And um, this is, they have a lot of a lot of uh, pressure built on them because a lot of people are relying on them to give them somewhat of a haunt fix. And I don't think they're going to let us down. Um, a lot of them have been opening. A lot of them have been in business. And a lot of them are going to be opening. And from a lot of the people we've talked to on the show, on the podcast, um, they are just so creative and I don't think I can do what they can do. Honestly, I don't think I can because their minds are just so creative and the stuff they think about is just so like over the top. Like I don't even think I could think of that. So I keep saying it every podcast we have a a, a home haunt creator on, or if I go to something, thank you for saving Halloween and thank you for, for keeping that Halloween spirit alive because without you guys, I don't think at least over here on the West coast, uh, I don't think uh, Halloween would be the same. And um, we appreciate all the people who are taking the necessary precautions, especially I know it's been rough probably trying to create a haunt during a pandemic, but they're taking the necessary precautions for everyone to be safe, to enjoy it, and still have fun and get scared, which I think is the most important part. So what a good debut episode on the Booze Bros for the East versus I West know. crew. I know. And for the most part, I mean, I got to say, we got a, a great group of guys for everybody to watch. You don't necessarily need to watch me. You don't necessarily need to watch Anthony, although we are are putting out very similar content with our own take, our own creative take. You got you got a, a plethora of, of creators here that you could come watch. Um, you're listening to the podcast now, so we appreciate that you jumped on, but make sure to check everybody out. Spread the love. Um, also, we, we want to spread the love to you guys, give you guys different different options 
of where where you're watching from um how you're watching you know it doesn't have to be necessarily west coast related it could be the east coast west coast or be both coast or the best of both coasts you know <laughs> the dose of both coasts that's what i meant damn it i messed up the damn slogan <laughs> The the it's dose of both goes. <laughs> Jesus, I messed up our slogan. Gosh darn it. I'm rusty, man. It's been like two months. All right. <laughs> I missed this though. I missed it's this. It's been a fun time, man. We're gonna try to stay uh somewhat consistent, at least for Booze Bros, uh, so we can get content going out. I think uh Losh and, and Chris have been kind of the only ones right now putting out content, but we want to join that that family and help out uh do our part in this so i hope you guys enjoyed east versus west uh we'll try to be as consistent as we can with this whether it be via coast comparisons end of the year recaps um whatever it may be maybe a roblox walkthrough how about that a roblox walkthrough with the east versus west crew can be fun um yeah. can each film on uh both sides on obs and then i can mash them together so that can be fun um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for checking out the debut episode of East vs. West on the Boo Bros. Uh, be sure to subscribe to all the channels uh, that are listed in the uh, main page of the channel. You'll find all of our channels, all of our links to our channels and everything on that main page. Uh, so go ahead and check everyone out. Give everyone a subscribe. Also, if you guys are new to the Booze Bros, thank you for checking us out. Um, we hope you guys are subscribed and have the bell notifications on because this is just the beginning and we have plenty to come between yep. all of us so and and welcome now now you're a boo bro now you're part of the booze bros now too <laughs> um but thank you guys so much for watching or if you're a woman booze sister hey you know sister sister <laughs> <laughs> booze boosis boosis there we go um <laughs> so we want everyone to uh have a safe and and great halloween we love all you guys uh, be sure to check out Eddie and my channel as well if you guys want more Haunt Fix from both coasts. And we will see you guys soon. Deuces.